This is Twit. And this is an interesting one because it's kind of related. Security guru Bruce Schneier famously coined the phrase security theater to describe a paradox that organizations live in when it comes to security. They take actions such as purchasing complicated and expensive cyber defenses to feel safer, right? However, Bruce thinks that security is both a feeling and a reality. In his words, quote, when people are scared, they need something done that will make them feel safe, even if it doesn't truly make them safer. Interesting, right? Well, enterprise security often falls prey to the same reflexive approach to new and unknown threats. There is perhaps no better way or example to this as the adoption of a lot of VPNs in organizations. Now, for time, for a time, VPNs did improve security, and they do. And it actually does help hide your browsing and all that. But there are designs that doesn't always meet all the requirements of the modern enterprise. Now, 25 years ago, VPNs were the cutting-edge technology of the day. They provided users with relatively straightforward ways to secure the access to your data or your network resources. But despite the explosive innovation these past two decades, VPN remains synonymous with secure remote access for an outsized portion of today's populace. But the current pandemic has forced millions of people, of workers, into log in from home, making it incumbent for CISOs to provide remote access without compromising security. Now, this particular article has some interesting call-outs here about, about VPNs, some food for thought. First one being, VPNs, a lot of them out there are plagued with vulnerabilities. And now, in June, the NSA issued a fresh warning that VPNs could be vulnerable to attack if not correctly secured. Now, they urged organizations to patch a critical flaw which exploited would allow attackers to take control of a device without a password and gain access to the rest of the network. Now, VPNs are also complex. They're expensive, and they can be brittle. For example, in the MIL or .gov firewalls, approximately 80% of the tens of thousands of firewall rules are associated with VPN management. So sometimes it's hard to, to, to make sure that those holes are plugged or not plugged so VPNs can work. Now, VPNs have become highly attracted targets for bad actors and nation states. So that's another interesting call out of VPNs. Now, to me personally, I, I, I do agree VPN is not the only thing you need to do here, especially for remote workers. But it is a good thing. Now, Cheaper, I, I want to send this over to you. It's not a silver bullet, right? But there are reasons. There's reasons to look outside of VPN, right? Because there's you want to make sure that you're adding layers into your networking, especially for remote workers. What, what are some yeah, of the my- other things that people can do? Well, my favorite analogy is using an armored car to move the crown jewels across town, but stopping short in a bad part of town and continuing the trip in a subcompact car. Where's <laughs> the ends of your VPNs? A VPN is right. only safe right. when you're in the pipe. So what happens when you go and do something silly like uh, a corporation does a VPN and it drops you into the trusted area of your corporate firewall and you don't look at anything else. Too many people have VPNs that are just dropping right into a trusted area of their network, and they're not treating it as a separate zone. Remember, we're all pretty much in agreement. Perimeter-based security is dead. Say it again. Perimeter-based security is dead. You need to think at least by zones. And keep in mind, if you're VPNing to multiple sites... That's multiple places where you could be popping out without any extra examination. So that's one of the big issues that I have with a lot of people that think VPNs are a magic bullet. They're not. Um, You need to go and have it look. All my VPNs that I try to implement pop out into a different zone, completely isolated from the rest of my enterprise network so that I have another layer so I can have IDS, IPS, and additional firewall rules to treat it as a separate zone. Um, lots of things. Your, you know, VPNs can be great. They can be secure. But if you're using a VPN appliance or you're using an internal VPN or something like that, and you're not using a real certificate, yeah, you know, not so good. Right. Anyway, I agree with the article in that, yes, VPNs can be complex, they can be expensive, can be brittle, they, especially if you start adding single sign-on to those. Uh, but you need to do things that make sense. Don't treat it as a trusted connection because you don't know what's happening at the far end. Always treat it as a different zone at the very least. Use real certificates 
And for God's sakes, change the passwords on a regular basis, especially if you're <laughs> playing SSO and that's an external way into your network. Right, right. Now, Chris, you live and breathe this stuff. Are organizations leaning too much on VPNs? What else is being done here? Well, I think you do get some, especially small organizations that run into trouble when they decide that the VPN is everything they need to do. Just set up a VPN and especially a VPN that the uh, employee has to launch. Uh, and once you have launched that VPN, then everything's copacetic. And as Brian said, that's not nearly the case. You know, a VPN can be important, especially if you are working from someplace with uh, public Wi-Fi. In those cases, you should absolutely have a VPN. But the VPN needs to be properly configured. A part of a comprehensive security plan and it needs to be used reliably, which means you need to have your uh, policies for uh, configuration of endpoints in place. You need to have users using the VPN every single time they log in from someplace that is not a trusted network. And perhaps most important, you should make sure that the VPN is not something that um, malware authors can use as a tool for lateral movement within the organization. One other thing, remember if you're going to be using VPNs that you should have them on your mobile devices too. Once your phone or tablet hooks up to a Wi-Fi network at one of these public locations, the vulnerabilities to it exist through the Wi-Fi just like the vulnerabilities exist for laptops. Right, right. Yeah, I, I definitely, I agree with both of you. I think I definitely agree with the article as well. It just can't be the only thing for organizations. But I know for most users, you're, like you're saying, when you're remotely working, you're working from a hotel room or from, uh, from you know, from the hotel lobby or from, you know, or for somewhere out, like at a coffee shop or something, using a VPN should definitely be done. It should be like the lowest layer of defense that you throw on there right away to ensure that you're, at least your traffic is safe. But Chibert, I want to throw this back to you one more time. Um, you know, the interesting thing here is, you know, obviously if a device is already compromised, you know, VPNs are useless, right? I think that they, they don't really, I mean, obviously a person can already just use the VPN to, to, to connect out, to, to kind of remote out or uh, from the device that's already been compromised. Is, is there something else here that organizations should be doing to ensure that, oh, wait, like obviously VPN is required. We should use one. But in the same sense, we should also be protecting the device itself, what people are downloading, what people are installing, uh, you know, other things, other services like that. You bet. I'm, I'm a big, big fan of mobile device policy systems. Um, make sure it's you have a up-to-date antivirus, anti-malware. Um, right. Don't let someone even connect if it's not up-to-date. Don't even let someone connect if they've turned it off. Um, VPNs can't be the one and only answer. It has to be part of a total solution. You have to have, you know, I, God forbid you should be running an ancient version. You know, you shouldn't, if you're in enterprise, you shouldn't let anyone come in with, say, something like Windows 7. Um, right. There's a lot of things that are that can be done. Windows 7 can be made secure, but darn, there's a lot of work involved with that. Um, so you need to have a lot of other things in your solution. You need to have the, the, so the stream of data. You should be looking at an IDS IPS for the VPN. You know, don't just use the IDS IPS for things going in and out of your, your network. Use it also for the VPN stream. So layers, you know, just because it's, you're going over a VPN doesn't mean um, your SaaS solution can be over unencrypted um, HTTP. HTTPS going over a VPN is just another layer. So right. sadly, there's way too much talent um, in the hacker community, and they're going to go and try and peel apart the pieces, make them work for it. 
Right. Yeah, I think that's a great tip. I think, you know, a lot of services out there, MDM, old device management, they do, if you, you know, register devices on there or force your people in your organization to use these things on your devices, they do. They do health checks. They do um, OS checks, make sure your device is up to date, make sure that there's no compromise, there's no ports open, there's no, you know, services that are running that are, you know, that shouldn't be there. Um, it installs um, some security devices, even enables VPNs and so on. So I think there's, I definitely agree that there's definitely, work out there for organizations to do. They should just not lean on one particular thing in hopes that it's going to be that silver bullet. 